Hi, this is Irv Shapiro with the Make With Tech YouTube channel. Over the past three years or so, two, sometimes three times, sometimes four times a month, I've been producing videos for this channel. Most of those videos teach people how to make things, how to create things, how to innovate for the joy of making things. A lot of those videos are about 3D printers and 3D printers are quite interesting. But much like a sewing machine, you need a plan. For a sewing machine, it's called a pattern. And some people design their own patterns. Some people buy patterns. Some people get patterns from friends. Well, the same thing happens with 3D printing. For many people, the go-to place to get patterns called models, in the case of 3D printing, is Thingiverse. And a little over two months ago, I did a video about Thingiverse because it's more or less been broken for a while. And tens of thousands of people watched the video and they produced thousands, thousands of comments. Some of the people thought I should produce a Thingiverse alternative that was free. Some of the people thought I was just bashing Thingiverse and it wasn't fair. That was not my intent. Some of the people thought a subscription model that would work well. Well, I've read every one of the comments. And over the last few months, I've spent hundreds of hours writing code. And today, I'm going to release to the public the beta release or a test release of a new online product that works alongside Thingiverse to help address some of its shortcomings and is the foundation for something I will build on to better support the 3D printing community. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. Now, if this is the first time you're watching Make With Tech, I urge you to subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll be notified about future videos, about Thingiverse, about 3D printing, about this new product I'm announcing today. Today, I'm announcing models.makewithtech.com, a new product to help you search for models to print, view the individual parts in 3D, rotate them around, look at them, customize, yes, a working customizer that can support up to a thousand simultaneous customizations by people all over the world. And everything I've talked about so far is free. There will be a more advanced subscription model that will allow you to save your customizations, to make notes on your customizations, to use more advanced features, but the free capabilities to search, view, and customize models will remain free forever. Let's look at this on the screen together. So here you see the screen for models.makewithtech.com. And the home screen is both a place to begin a search. There's another way to do that. I'll show you in a minute with more options, but it's also your help, your tutorial, your FAQ. So if we scroll down on the screen, we'll see there's a section here on getting started, where if you follow these steps, you'll have no problem using this product. There's a section here on the background where you can view the original video from a few months ago and learn more about why I've produced this. So let's do our first search. Let's say I wanted to search for shelf brackets. So I'll type that in the search box. I can either hit return here or click on the search button. Now this is going out to Thingiverse. So if Thingiverse is slow that day, this will be slow. In fact, I use the official Thingiverse API with a Thingiverse provided key. Because of that, I'm very careful to be compliant with the API. When you search for generic models, not open SCAD models, I let you view them on the screen 
And then you'll see there's a little T button next to the model. If you click on that model, it will go to the page in Thingiverse. You'll see, unfortunately, this takes a bit of time and you can download the model from there. For open SCAD customizable models, I do a bit more and let's look at that together. So here's a model for parametric L bracket. I'm going to click on the name here and we'll see here on the right hand side, a list of the parts that make up that model. If I click on 3D next to a part, if it's an STL file, if it's already a 3D part, I can see it on the screen and I can view it. I can zoom it in and out. I can move it around on the screen. But here's the magic. I've re-implemented the customizer using a relatively current build of OpenSCAD and I'll be upgrading to the latest builds on a continuous basis. So let's click on this little box over here and we'll see it's now retrieving the OpenSCAD script. It's retrieving the instructions that came from the author and there's a section for parameters. Now, if I want to make this a little bit bigger, oh, well, let's say we're going to make this a much bigger bracket, 50 millimeters. I can fill in 50 millimeters there and then click on Q for rendering. The model's now queued. I click on OK. I can go up here to the processing queue and I can actually see when my model was queued and that my model is in the queue. Open SCAD rendering is not fast. It can take 10, 20, 30 seconds. It can take 20 minutes depending on your model. Now, if I go to this next icon, which is the results screen, I'll see the models that I've already rendered. Now, while that's working, let me show you some more capabilities about search. If I click on the Browse Thingiverse here, you'll see there's a checkbox here for customizer only. If I uncheck that, I'm going to search Thingiverse for all models, both models I can customize and models I can't. So here's a model that has no open SCAD file. And you can see here, it has the ability though to view items in 3D. So I still can view all of the parts in 3D. In addition, you'll notice that the way I'm browsing Thingiverse, it's very fast. And you can look through a large number of items very quickly to find the particular item that you're looking for. You will notice that these STL files are not downloadable because I'm not trying to take business away from Thingiverse for models that are available there. Once again, if I click on the little T next to a model, if it's a model that I actually decided I wanted after searching with this more rapid search, you can bring that model back and you'll see the actual Thingiverse screen. But the power of this system is this power to look through models quickly and view them in 3D. Let's say you build your own models and you want to test to see if they're going to work in the customizer before you submit them today to Thingiverse in the future, write to models.makeotech.com. So click on select open SCAD models and I'm going to take and select a mug that I produced and then I'm going to click on upload and customize. And when you upload a model from your local hard drive, there is no image to go with it. So instead I show you the actual open SCAD script. Today, this is not editable, perhaps in the future. I can look at the various parameters. Let's make this um, sort of a taller mug and I can queue for rendering. Let's go back to our queue here. And we'll see there are actually two items in here right now. There's the bracket 
that I had queued before, and there's the mug. Let's take a look at our output queue, and there's nothing there yet. So that's not available yet. Now, while that's working, let me show you a couple more features. There is a dark mode to this system. If you prefer a dark mode, I think this dark mode is ugly. And so I need to do quite a bit more work on it. I think I need to change the banners and the headings and maybe even the footer. But there is a dark mode if you'd like to look at that. There is an information screen that has links for the Make With Tech website, the YouTube channel, and a variety of other areas about Make With Tech. There's the video icon, which will take you right to videos, hundreds of videos about making things with technology. And let's go back to model results. Aha, and our mug is complete. Now you'll see there are three files in here. The first file, and it's actually on the bottom here, is the STL file. That's actually the model. I can click on 3D, and <laughs> this is quite a strange mug. You'll see in this particular design, I don't move the handle up, obviously, when I render the model. So this is not a mug I would probably want to use. You can see the actual SCAD file, and that's the SCAD file that I've modified with the customizer. You can download the STL file. You can download the SCAD file. So if I click on download here, you'll see that it'll download to my local computer. And if I click on the download icon next to the log file, you'll actually see any error messages from the processing. Now, anytime you change a parameter, you'll get a warning message for that parameter. Because what I do is I rely on an interesting feature about SCAT. And that is if you redefine a variable down further in the model, that will become the default for that variable. So I redefined the parameters that are up top, down at the bottom, and that becomes the new value for those parameters. Now it is possible that if you create an SCAD source file in a particular way, that might not work, but that's the way I've implemented it so far. And so you'll see any parameters that were redefined, and I give you a couple little messages about that process. Okay, let's go back to our queue. Wow, that uh, L bracket is still in there. And it is possible from time to time that items could get stuck, in which case you could delete them and resubmit them. And if you do have a problem, you should click on this link down here on the bottom, Report Bugs and Request Features. And there are two ways you can communicate with me about this product. One is you can click on this link here and go to forum.makewithtech.com. That's a general forum with thousands of users about 3D printing and other technologies. It'll take you right to the model support forum. Unfortunately, it is a separate signup from models Dot makewithtech.com, you'll be able to post information right to this forum. And either I or other people in the community will be able to help you out. In addition, if you find a bug, um, let's say model stock bracket model and the Thingiverse number if you have it. Now, optionally, you can provide your email address. You don't have to. If you do and it's something that we need additional information, we'll reach out to you. You click to verify you're a human and then you submit that request. Now, what are you seeing now? Well, I'm hoping to keep this a very transparent process. So you'll actually see all of the steps that I took to build this model. You'll see the backlog of items, items that are currently scheduled items under review. Once your item has been reviewed by a human being on our team, if it's a valid bug or a legitimate feature request, it will be added to this section 
or perhaps the scheduled section. So this is an unusual process because while this is not currently open source software, it may be in the future, I'm not sure yet how to facilitate that. It is an open community project. Now to use this system, you do need to sign into the software. You'll see I'm signed in as Irv Shapiro. I'm going to sign out now. You sign in with a username and a password. There is a facility here to create an account. And there is a facility here to reset your password. Now, I store all of that information in Amazon AWS Cognito. So I'm not storing it in my own system. I'm storing it in a secured system. And I don't know about you, I've never heard about Amazon being hacked. They know how to do security. So I chose that facility specifically to make this secure. So let me sign back in. There we go. Let me look at my results and our L bracket is now here. It's no longer in the queue. We can look at the STL file here. Looks nice. We can look at the log. Now, on this screen, there's a limit of nine files. If you have over nine files here, you're gonna get a pop-up message saying you have to delete some. So you can just delete them from the top here and you can keep just maybe the STL files or other files you're interested in. The reason for that is just cost. AWS, Amazon's not free. They wanna make money. And currently I'm paying for all of this for these free features, which takes us to the future. In the future, there will be a subscription add-on for this. Let's look at that. Now, if we go back to the home screen, you will see there's a section here on limitations, but there's also a next step section. And in the next step section, I'll share with you the plans for this product. So where does that leave us? Well, I hope even as a beta release that this is a useful addition to the 3D printing community by providing the ability to have a working customizer that can handle hundreds and hundreds of simultaneous users at the same time. I hope to use this as a springboard to build an overall new ecosystem that not only allows you to search for models, but more importantly, allows you to search for models that you can customize. And yes, you might like the search engine I've built as a fast way to front end Thingiverse. That's great. But the real power comes in being able to customize models. If you want to see more videos about this and other things, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell. Have a great day and let's continue to learn things together.